Now, what is up my fellow prod coders? Welcome to this video and today we'll continue working on our sub navigation. So in the last tutorial, we already did the main part. So we added these drop downs here. So that's pretty cool, uh, but we're not quite there yet. So if we go to the screenshot, we see that, okay, here we have these drop downs. So they have different icons. And we also need these two buttons here on the right. So this is what we're going to do right now. So let's jump in immediately. Um, the first thing we could do is we could update these icons here. So right now we always have the same icon, but of course we want different icons. So this one is somehow like a house maybe. So let's head over to Font Awesome, uh, search for house. And yes, this one, FAS and then FA-home. Okay, so let's go to our subnav and then we can say FA-home. Okay, and then what else do we need? We need auto services, it's, it's like a car. Yeah, so let's search for a car. Okay, so here's a car. Ah, this one. FA-car-side. Okay, so we're just going to enter FA-car-side. Right, because remember we already imported Font Awesome and now we're just swapping all the icons. That's pretty much it. And here we have this info. Yeah, it's maybe info. So let's search for info. And, oh yeah, here it is. So it has this uh, fa-info-circle, okay? So fa-info-circle, nice. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, now, one thing here, these borders here, they are, well, they are like round borders here. And in the screenshot, we only have, we don't have these round borders, right? We have these sharp borders. So that's what we should work on. So let's go back to our code editor. Uh, let's go to this subnav item. And we already see, okay, we're actually inside a button. Ah, that's also maybe not ideal, right? Because it's not really a button. So let's give it, let's make it a div. And by the way, the reason that uh, the corners are round is because this button class comes from Bulma. And well, yeah, Bulma has adds a corner radius. So if we remove that, oh, then we see ah, it's not quite what we want. Mm, okay, so maybe you want to add a new CSS class and just uh, add a little bit of styling so that it looks properly. So let's go to our uh, CSS class here, and let's just say uh, sub nav item. And in here, what could we do? Well, we could add a padding. Let's just say 0.35 rem. And by the way, I was just experimenting uh, with these values. So it's like, not that I guessed this, I just tried it out. And in here, now let's first apply this class. So we can say import styles from sub sub nav item dot module dot CSS. And then we can say class name equals styles. And then let's use this class we just created sub nav item. Okay, so it should now have it should now have a little bit of padding. Yeah, barely noticeable. Okay, now another thing here is, so now it's a little bit spaced out, so the individual items are spaced out, but you can see they are also not vertical, vertically aligned. So this here, ah, it just doesn't look nice. And the easiest way to vertically align multiple elements is by using Flexbox. So what we are going to do is, we will go back to our editor, to our CSS file, and then we can just say, mm, yeah, subnav item. So we can just say display flex 
and then align items center. And if you're unsure about like why, then please check this um, CSS tricks uh, flexbox guide. So in here you will see that align items um, aligns all flexbox children along the perpendicular axis of the main axis. <laughs> Sounds complicated, but it's actually quite easy. This one is a horizontal flex container. And if you say align items, then it's going to align all children vertically. I think we already had that multiple times, so that's why I will not pull open the, the docs, otherwise it gets boring. Ah, and now you see, okay, that looks actually pretty nice. Yes. Now, here, it's not that great, right? We should have a little bit of space between the icon itself and the text, and maybe also a little bit of space here. So let's go back to our uh, CSS and let's just say, okay, uh, sub nav item. And then we see everything that is a direct descendant uh, of this. We're just going to say hmm, maybe margin, right? I don't know, pro pixels maybe. Yes. Ah, whoops. That's much nicer, isn't it? Yes. Now it's vertically aligned and we have like a proper spacing between the items. That's pretty good, um, but we're still not there yet. So we see they have this grayish border right now and we should start working on that as well. And this is pretty easy. Mm, what we can just do is, if we have a look at our uh, markup, we can just say, okay, why don't we just add like something in here? So let's just add like some border property to this uh, sub nav item. And that should actually do the trick, right? Uh, yeah, just need to look something up in here. Yeah, okay, let's just go. We will just say hmm, maybe in here, we can say border left pixel solid black. Okay. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> Let's zoom out. Okay. So what we just did is we just said, okay, each flex container will have a, or each flex, um, uh, this div inside our, of the individual items here will have a left uh, border and that works, but the border itself is actually not black. It's some uh, gray color and uh, I just opened the inspector and looked it up. So it's RGB 230, 230, 230. And what this means is like 230 of red, 230 out of 255 of red. Uh, this is green and this is the blue part. So if it's close to 255, it's, it somehow gets gray. And 255 for each of these would be white. Okay, so that looks much nicer. Um, what we still need here though, now every item has a left border, but we actually need a right border here. So how are we going to do this? Well, we can just add a prop. So we can say, well, maybe const uh, border class equals uh, props dot show right border. And then we will say, this is styles at right border and then empty string. So what this means is, oops, question mark. So what this means is if this prop is set then we will assign like this value styles at right at right border to our variable here. And if not, it's just going to be empty string. And then what we can just do is we can go in here and we can make this, we can put this inside backticks and we can use string interpolation here. And then we can say styles 
Uh, no, we can just say border class. And let's go to our CSS file. And let's just say, uh, what was it? I think it was right border. And then we can copy this. And then add a dot here. Okay, so let's go back and see if it's working. Ah, we of course need to assign it. So one thing like for explanation. So if we set this show right water props, then we are going to add an additional class um, to this div here. And this additional class is going to set a right border as well. But of course we need to use it inside here. So we can say maybe here show right border. That should work. Let's go back. And we don't see it. <laughs> Interesting. Why don't we see it? Was it show right border? Yes, right border and oh yeah, it must of course be border right. Now we have it. Okay. Cool. So now we have this grayish border. Uh, we have a nice spacing in here and that looks pretty neat. But since we are already hitting like the 10 minutes, oh, we already have 11 minutes actually. Uh, let's just stop this over here and let's continue in the next section where we will add these two remaining buttons and then align everything properly. So you can see it's a little bit of work to get the styling right of these things. Uh, but it's actually not that hard. It's just a little bit of tweaking. So thank you very much for watching. Please make sure to give the video a thumbs up. And also please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so.